in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom he made the universe. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Thanks be to God for his word from Hebrews chapter 1, reminding us that this is a day when we celebrate the coming of Jesus Christ amongst us. I don't normally decorate my study, but I'll put up a few lights just to uh, celebrate the special day. We're going to sing. Come and join the celebration. Um, I'm not sure I've hit all the right notes on this one, or at least not at the right speed, but, uh, well, join in with gusto, and uh, I'm sure we'll get through it okay. Let us pray. Gracious God, we praise you for the glorious message of this season, the glad tidings of great joy, ever old and yet ever new. We thank you for the faith of Mary, the commitments of Joseph, the message of the angels and the response of the shepherds, the way you changed their lives that day in Bethlehem. Above all, though, we thank you that you have changed our lives too, that the good news these heard and responded to long ago is news still today, as special now as then, and for us as much as anyone. Teach us never to forget that wonderful truth, never to overlook the fact that you have come to us in Christ, May that knowledge burn brightly in our hearts, a constant source of joy and inspiration, whatever life may bring. In the name of Christ we ask it. Amen. And as a reading from Luke chapter 2, verse 1, we're going to hear the story of how Jesus came to be born According to Luke, 
In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and lion of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Thanks be to God. And we'll sing another carol, a very well-known one, Away in a Manger. Well, I don't have a lot to say today um, for various reasons. Uh, one is that if any of you are actually watching this on Christmas Day, you've probably got better things to do than listen to me. Uh, you will have uh, your Christmas dinner, no doubt, waiting to be eaten, presents to be opened or whatever. Uh, so I will try and be brief. But I do want to reflect on... Uh, two words from the Christmas story that we've just heard. Two familiar words, no room. And I'm sure you recognise the context of that. Mary had to put Jesus in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. But what are the implications of those two words? One is that I, I did wonder whether I perhaps need to rethink some of the, the pictures I have in my mind about what that early Christmas day was like, the birth of Jesus. But more importantly, I think there's a, a message here for us. It's not an original message, but it's a message that it is worth reminding you about. But first of all, what does it mean, no room? Well, let me start by asking you to imagine... Um, a car. Uh, we're always shown adverts for cars that seem to suggest that there's plenty of room in a car. You can get lots of people in, you can get lots of equipment in, uh, or luggage if you're going on holiday. Uh, cars need to be roomy and spacious. Uh, that's one of the selling points. And you can get a lot of stuff in a car if you pack it floor to ceiling. Uh, when we have uh, had a go at the garden and 
cut down lots of foliage and lots of tree branches and we need to take them to the tip. Uh, my wife is always the one who says, uh, looking at this huge pile on the lawn, we'll never get all that in the car. And I'm always the one who says, oh yes, we will, because I'm confident that if it's squashed down uh, and, and we can squeeze it in. And usually I'm right, which is nice sometimes. Um, sometimes you get lots of people in a car, maybe more than you think. It's not that long ago that uh, we were going somewhere with the grandchildren in their car uh, and two of the grandsons were on the back seat already in their car seats, which left very little room between the two of them. And therefore I was told, oh, you need to sit in the front. But I took that as a challenge. Oh, no, there's, there's room for me in the back. I'm not that wide. I can squeeze in there. Uh, and I did just it took a lot of effort much to the amazement and amusement of the two grandsons but I, I squeezed in there somehow just to prove it could be done well an inn is not like a car um, how many people can you squeeze into an inn well um, in one sense if you just had people all squashed in standing up uh, you could probably get an awful lot of, of people, but that would be missing the point because uh, people don't want to hire uh, a room for the night and find that there's 50 people in the same room all standing shoulder to shoulder like this, unable to move. Uh, of course, uh, you need a bit of space around you uh, to undress and go to bed and do your ablutions or what, whatever needs to be done. Uh, so uh, the no room isn't literally they couldn't be squashed in but the rooms were full uh, there were too many people in Bethlehem because Joseph wasn't the only one who traced back his ancestry to King David and King David was the uh, the one who's uh, who grew up in Bethlehem uh, this was his hometown and therefore uh, Anybody descended from David could rightly claim this was where they belonged. And Joseph was no doubt one of many. So lots of people in the town. And, and this is what gave me pause for thought, because a lot of the images we have of uh, that first night, that uh, nativity scene, uh, we, we don't get crowds of people. Uh, admittedly, many would have been asleep at night but we we often get uh jesus and joseph and mary fairly isolated i mean you, you, on christmas cards for example uh we have uh just an isolated stable uh that the town's off there in in the distance i know these aren't intended to be uh realistic uh you know this, this is not um you know art trying to describe exactly what it was like uh, and in fact there we do have quite a few people around shepherds uh, one of the kings appearing and so on uh, and in fact some of the uh, the more artistic ones uh, this one was apparently the adoration of the magi uh, and it, it's got a couple of women in the background i've no idea who they are and uh, you know they're having a bit of a natter in the background they're obviously nobody very important because they don't have those halos around their heads. Uh, but maybe this is a bit more realistic. Lots of people around. I, I'm not quite sure. As I say, um, traditionally our understanding is that it all happened in the middle of the night. So people would in general be asleep. But in, in a very crowded town and a very crowded inn, surely there would be some movement coming and going um, I'm sure I'm not the only one who sometimes gets up in the night and wanders around to conduct well various things that I need to conduct um, people would have been busy there was hustle and, and bustle and I don't suppose it was just limited to the daytime it would have been quieter at night but maybe uh, we should be imagining Jesus born in and amongst a lot more hustle and bustle than is normally pictured on the cards, not peace and quiet. But 
the the main thing I do want to say about this phrase, no room, is that I find it uh, very ironic in a way that when Jesus came, there was no room to fit him in where the crowds were. Because in his adult life, he seemed very happy amongst the crowds. Not all the time, admittedly. There were times when he got up early and he went out uh, into uh, far off wilderness places to be on his own uh, and to commune with God his Father in the peace and quiet and the loneliness of the desert or uh, the lakeside or wherever he could find a bit of, of peace. So yes, there were times he, he deliberately wanted to get away from the crowds, but there were plenty of times when he was very happy amongst the crowds, when he was used to the crowds. A crowded house, for example, where uh, people bringing a sick man to him could not get in. There was no room for them in the house other than climbing onto the roof and breaking uh, open the roof so they could let the man down through the ceiling. Or Jesus uh, walking along the street when a woman touched him from behind and he felt the touch and, and wanted to know who touched me. And the disciples said, well, you're in a crowd. There's people pressing in on you on every side. How can you say, who touched me? Jesus was used to crowds uh, and, and seemed very much at, at home there because he came to be amongst people. That's why Jesus was born. He wasn't born so he could be stuck in a, a stable in the back of beyond. He came to be part of the human race, to be where people are. Bethlehem at the time seems to have been a, a bustling town, lots of hubbub, lots of people there, so many that the inns were full. And Jesus was part of that. And yet on the very night he was born, there were just too many, too much hustle and bustle, too many people. There was no room for him other than in a stable and laid in a manger. At Christmas, there is a lot of hustle and bustle going on. Sometimes a lot of people, families turning up and staying and crowding us out of house and home sometimes. Uh, sometimes uh, there's just so many activities going on, things happening, things to do, things to organise. But Jesus came to be part of that. Don't let him find that there is no room in your life this Christmas season. Don't let him be sidelined to a manger. Make sure that you make room for Jesus. And I know some people watching this might find that they actually would like to have more people in their lives. There are people who live alone and would like there to be more hustle and bustle than there is. Um, but you too uh, need to make room for Jesus. Uh, it might be easier in, in one sense, but whoever we are, whatever's going on this Christmas season, all the distractions, all the things that could easily fill up our time, fill up our lives, don't let them fill them up to the extent that there is no room left for Jesus. Make him part of your Christmas celebration and, of course, part of your life throughout Christmas season and the new year and every day to come. Let's pray together. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we open our lives to you right now. We are sorry if there are times when we have been so distracted with the, the requirements of other people and the business of life and all the activities that need to be done, especially in a busy Christmas season. We are sorry if we have neglected you, Lord Jesus. Come now, enter this moment, fill our lives with your presence and bring us the joy and the peace and the love that you came to bring long ago. May it be ours today. For your name's sake we ask it. Amen. Let's join in the Lord's Prayer together. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And one final carol. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. I've been arguing that it perhaps wasn't that still, but this is the traditional picture. It's a traditional carol. Let's sing it. But I like the last verse, which invites Jesus to come to be part of our lives today. And now, may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you and remain with you through this Christmas season and forevermore. And a very happy Christmas and a very pleasant new year to everyone. Amen. <laughs>